Welcome to CCRPG, where we open up our virtual table and play games with some good friends. I'm Bob, and I'm going to be running Lancer, an RPG by Miguel Lopez and Tom Parkinson Morgan. You can find it at Massive Press on itch.io. Lancer is a role-playing game about sci-fi and giant robots, where our players are elite pilots taking jobs, fighting in their mechs, and traveling the stars. In a moment, we'll meet the players, and they can introduce themselves and their pilot. But first, the game begins with a ship. Not just any ship. Your ship. The DBC. Solid. Reliable. Hardworking. Or so the representatives from Apogee Material and Materiel have written about it in trade papers. Targeting hauling companies. The DBC is a converted, jump-enabled cargo ship, complete with a mech bay where once deliveries would be kept. Now the ship makes deliveries of a different kinds. As our view moves down and into the ship, where do we find our crew and what are they doing? Todd, why don't you start us off? Why don't you introduce you and your pilot? Okay, hi there. Uh, my name's Todd and my pilot, his name is Astro Jammin. Uh, he's the owner of the DBC, uh, the ship that we're all on. Uh, it's short for the Deathbot Chronicles, uh, and the reason why it's called that is Astro Jammin is a world famous, a galaxy famous movie star, uh, and one of his most successful movies uh, is called the Deathbot Chronicles, in which he played a legendary mech pilot assassin who's called out of retirement for one last job. Um, he is an actor that takes his roles very seriously. He likes to do his own stunts. Uh, he likes to research his roles. So as a result of doing some of these action movies, especially Death Box Chronicles, he learned a lot about piloting mechs. Um, after the release of Deathbot 2, he got into some hot water with the studios uh, because he criticized one of uh, the producers um, that served on the board that uh, funded one of these studios that he worked with. Uh, he was blacklisted as a result, and now he can't find work. So he decided he's going to go out into space and try to experience what he's only acted in. Um, he wants to pursue the life of a Lancer pilot and root out injustice, if possible. He kind of looks like Edward Norton. He has short blonde hair, kind of has a narrow but young-looking face. He's in his mid-40s, and he's clean-shaven. Uh, as a vain movie star, he takes his appearance very seriously, so he's always trying to look his best. But uh, that's Astro Jammin. He bought the ship, and he hired this crew. Um, and they're going around, you know, trying to, uh, you know, uh, find jobs and uh, do what they can in this galaxy. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, Todd. Uh, and after that, let's uh, jump over to Jay. Why don't you introduce yourself and your pilot? All right. Uh, well, I'm Jay. Uh, my pilot's name is Graham Demiri, although he prefers to go by his call sign, Rock, uh, as he's been known by that more so than anything these days. Uh, he has been in the much more successful movie, Killerbot Chronicles 4. Uh, Whoa. He, no, I'm just kidding. He's not of movie star. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who could come up with something like that? Uh, no, uh, he doesn't talk about his past that much. Um, he will curtly answer questions, yes or no, but um, he was hired by uh, a strange man who was recognized, Astro Jammin. Um, and whether it was a joke or not, he didn't really care because the pay was okay. Uh, finding out that it wasn't a joke and he was actually going to be working on a ship with Astro Jammin. It's a shrug of the shoulders and a high paying job was, uh, was it for him. Uh, he's about a medium-sized bill with black hair and an undercut slicked back with soft blue eyes. There's a slight scar above his right eye in the middle of the eyebrow. Uh, he looks young for his age to be a man in about his later 20s with a lean but muscular build if you can see it through his uh, shaggy clothes that he tends to wear. All right. Thanks, Jay. Uh, and then... Let's bump on over to Jeremy. Please introduce yourself and your pilot. All right. Uh, I'm Jeremy, and my character is Dine Starseeker. Dine's an older man in his early 40s. That's about uh, six feet tall. 
His hair is uh, jet black with tinges of gray that's starting to show. He has a neatly kept beard and mustache. His eyes are a warm brown color. And he has a scar on his left cheek that runs from his nose all the way to the left ear. A relic from uh, a near-death experience from a mech explosion. Dine was hired on as the medic of the crew. And he's not an actual trained physician, but uh, due to the years of living with his father, his father basically beat the basics into him. And, well, over the years, he's kept up with the training and learned new things as needed. However, Dine suspects that the real reason he was hired by Astro is due to him being a successful member of many of Farfield teams. Farfield teams are those who explore the unknown, unexplored frontier. And Dine, he loves it. He loves exploring, regardless of what the actual goal of the mission was. But, you know, regardless of why he was hired, as long as Astro pays him, he'll use his skills and knowledge to aid the crew. All right. Thanks a lot, Jer. Uh, And then last but not least, Charles, if you would please introduce yourself and your character. Yeah, sure. Uh, My character is Evelyn Bullock, who's, I guess, effectively the team's designated mechanic. Um, She's a older woman in her early 50s um, short blonde hair that's starting to show some white um, she's sort of a of a short stockier build and she mostly wears her worker coveralls when she's not in her uh, pilot hard suit uh, she, her background is um, she's she's basically from a mining planet called Rhyolite which is a mining planet under the ownership of the um, IPS North Star Corporation um, it's a relatively busy uh, mining plant. They always, there's always seems to be plenty of ore available. Um, Evelyn comes from a long line of miners. Her parents are miners. Her parents' parents were miners. And she kind of figured that she'd always kind of live and die by the mines. Um, she's basically been working here most of her life. And it wasn't until um, uh, Astro Jammin shows up and uh, that she had a, a means of really getting out from that rut that she was in. Um, Basically, what happened was uh, Astro's team had a um, mission on a planet, and he t- bore witness to her ability to um, pilot the uh, mining mechs that they often use to move some of the larger uh, pieces of, um, of rubble and um, ore. <laughs> and uh, Astro was immediately um, d- he immediately decided to um, get her as their. Um, mechanic although i guess technically his exact words were like how'd you like to be a star Um, (laughs) how'd you like to be in pictures kid well (laughs) unlike everyone else in the team uh evelyn has never heard of astro and she has never seen any of his movies so he thought she thought he was nuts but um eventually she was convinced to uh join the um, crew don't worry, in your downtime, Astro is going to fix that. <laughs> I, I like to think that he's tried several times and now she's making a point to not see them because... There she... is mandatory movie <laughs> night every Tuesday, so... <laughs> yeah, good all see. his movies. Good, good luck. a few movies good. over and over. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, Astro. We'll, we'll see how you that see goes. You see him, like, mouthing the words to every line he has. <laughs> Crying when he needs yes. to, laughing when he needs to. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. I think that gives us a nice little picture of our uh, of our Lancer team here. Um, And where we're going to start this game um, is you guys have been working together for a little while now, enough to have at least a a partial group dynamic, even if you aren't the most comfortable around each other yet. Uh, You've been on some missions. And in fact, uh, where we're picking up today is after having just finished your most recent mission together. Uh, a kind of standard job that um, our our good friend Astra was hoping might get him a little bit closer to reconciliation with his uh, old old corporation, uh, Terratella, the uh, galactic uh, telecom and media uh, super giant corp. Um, things went OK and. You do deserve to be paid for your work, uh, and that's where you're heading now. Uh, the DBC, your ship, has just arrived in the Archie system. Um, that is where you picked up your mission last time, and that's where you're going back to get paid now. Um, where you're going exactly, though, is 
called the edge of sleep. Um, but no one says that. They all call it AO Station. Uh, AO Station is one of the larger privately owned stations in the sector and a few hours down impulse in the Archie system. Um, it is the largest station in Archie as well. Um, Archie as a system uh, is known for significant resource explanation outposts down well, uh, as well as uh, subsidiary claims from different corporations and a few Cygnus state colonies. Um, but you're not going that far into the system. You're just going to get to the station now and get some probably well-deserved well downtime after your last mission. Um, as you guys are kind of on the last little hour or so trek to the station, where are you in the ship and what are you up to? So we're heading to the station. Do we expect to get paid there too? Or are we just heading there as like a, a pit stop? Uh, no, you're expecting to actually pick up your payment there. Um, okay. you, you also need to refuel and things like that. Uh, AO station is the largest uh, station in the sector. Well, the largest privately owned station in the sector, and it's where you departed from uh, prior to your previous mission. Uh, it's also where the um, regional um, the regional offices of Terratella are located. It is a private station, but you would know pretty well that the administration districts uh, on the station uh, house a lot of regional offices, and that's that's who hired you previously. You're basically reporting back to them. Every gotcha. time you say Teratella, I just think of Hanna Barbera. I'm like oh, really? expecting Yoda <laughs> the Bear to come out and be like, "Hey, hey, maybe, maybe they've, maybe they're the organization that's ended up with those, uh, w that's ended up with those rights in this future. Uh, they are the <laughs> largest uh, media conglomerate that exists right now. So who knows? <laughs> Once a year, they get a bunch of spaceships together and have what they call the wacky races. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> it, it's been long enough uh, now that no one knows the difference between Yogi Bear and Yogi Berra, and everyone just thinks that the bear is really good at sports <laughs> that's fair i like it um to answer your original question i would be in the pilot seat as i am the pilot of the ship i would imagine Are... i'm probably working on repairing the mechs from our last mission i think in particular um dine's mech took a lot of heat damage so i think Evelyn is probably trying to figure out like what we what she can do to fix this up with the parts we have available to us uh, all right. Well, Astro is going to be bothering you, Eveline, while you work, uh, and he's going to be going down a list of the movies he's been in, uh, incredulously asking, how could you have not seen Yellow Alert? What about Red Alert? You've seen that one, right? I'll just kind of look up for my work and say, Astro, I'll tell you what, it's a lot less work to not see something than it is to see something. And I'll get back. I'll just get back to work. Astro looks confused for a moment. He seems to consider it. And then he's like, but you've seen Black Alert, right? I'll look up again and say, you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you're just adding a color to Alert to make up these movie names. The Alert series is how I got my start in the industry. Some of my best work. You need to see it. I'll just pinch, I'll pinch the bridge of my nose and say, like, Look, I'll tell you what. Maybe after we get paid, we pop. I'll get some popcorn. And I'll watch one movie. One. Oh, you won't be able to stop at just one. Trust me. I doubt that. I'll get back to work. All right. Well, it's a date. Should probably go to the bridge and see how things are going. What? You made a bad, bad decision. You made, made a promise to Astro. I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Jim has uh, one of those names you have to say like the whole name each time I feel like Astro Jammin. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, that's not no stage name. That's his God given name. At least that's what we all think. <laughs> yeah. At least that's what he tells you. Um, after after that exchange, Asher is gonna head to the bridge, uh, check up on um, Graham. All right. So as you're heading there, what's Dine up to? <laughs> Dine will be uh, working with Torse, making sure that all of the uh, 
that everything for the have for what we need for having completed the mission is ready and talking with her about any <clears throat> potential missions that we might have after this and i think that uh as you uh off the cuff that so easily is a good uh excuse for me to describe your fifth member of the crew um so in addition to the rest of y'all uh mc lancer pilots um you also have uh torse lees um she is a youngish uh operator and comms officer uh for your crew uh that dine recruited um I mean, uh, as far as like how long you've all been together now, I think what you all would know about her is she's an active enthusiast for media. Um, you always find her in different parts of the ship, watching a film, listening to a new album or reading. Um, she wears an open olive jacket with a lined hood, a white long sleeve T-shirt that hangs loose and has a graphic on it. Um, she has some black fabric, long pants that tuck into tall, laced up black boots uh, and she has her hair straight to about neck length, uh, jet black hair with a single bright orange strip on the side. Um, and then she's uh, kind of there with you, Dine, and she, you see her kind of pulling up a little. Um, I, I assume you guys are in your kind of uh, prep room, uh, the, yeah. the room you guys use before missions, <clears throat> because this has the largest like shared terminal in the uh, in the ship. Uh, she pulls up some uh, information for you and she says, oh, Dine, I don't know what we would do if we didn't have an experienced operator like you on the team. I, I try to talk with uh, Astra about this stuff, but it seems like he's never worried. Uh, he she just kind of like uh you know it you know it kind of hit my head here you guys have seen um fucking uh minority report right where they sure, move yeah, where they move yeah. the windows around with their hands and shit yeah <laughs> she just like reaches <laughs> down on the thing and like moves like a window over to in front of dine so he can look at it and she's like well i mean this is kind of where we are on supplies right now um i mean with I'm already assuming what Terratella is going to give us. Um, we made enough money on that last mission to stay afloat, <clears throat> but it's not enough to take any holidays with. We're going to need a new job or our operating expenses are going to start catching up with us. Well, hopefully when we reach AO station, we'll be able to uh, pick up a new job. Uh, well, to be honest, though, Torse. The one time you should really worry about Astro is when he is really, truly worried, because when he drops that facade, then, you know, shit's going to go down. She just takes <laughs> takes a deep breath and just sighs, shakes her head and goes, <clears throat> yeah, you're probably right. Well, we're close now. I think we're going to be docking in a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to send some uh, more information. Oh, and uh you know, I got a message for you, too. I'll send it to your personal terminal. Check it out when you get a chance. OK. And uh, if you get a chance, see if there's any current uh, requests for missions as we uh, go into AO station. At least give us a, you know, look for something that we can do. Yeah, once we dock, I'll make sure I sync up our systems with the newest news for the station. So, uh. We'll see. I'll send you guys any leads I find. Well, I suppose the one advantage to having Astro on the ship is his name will definitely raise some eyebrows for interested clientele. <laughs> <laughs> but is it fame or infamy? Both. And that's not that's neither good nor bad. Or both. Either she, way. <laughs> she just she just nods. Alright, well it's not like we're gonna it's not like we're gonna have to mortgage the ship anytime soon so take some time to relax you guys had a bit of a bit of a rough one on that last mission i'm you all deserve it yeah i think i will at least the one thing i won't be doing is relaxing while watching movies i, I get enough of that <laughs> with astro around oh i i've seen most of them just uh, there's only so many of them i can watch more than three times You've only seen them three? I think I fell asleep during the last showing. Well, then that doesn't uh, count, does it? 
I, I have so much I'll to look forward wave, to I'll now. I'll just wave, wave at her as I walk out as I walk out the room. <laughs> she she like she does the thing where she like turns back to the terminal as you're leaving and just like waves over her shoulder at you <laughs> as the door closes <laughs> between you. Can I ask as uh, since Torsay's like a enthusiast of pop culture was she a little starstruck when uh she first became a crew member on the ship with the astro jammin i am assuming that's why you hired her okay that makes <laughs> sense that checks out <laughs> she, she probably looks cheaper than someone who isn't all struck can't can't have a ship without a few groupies <laughs> <laughs> few groupies and a few anti-groupies <laughs> yeah <laughs> balances it out <laughs> all nice right balance party so uh yeah you guys anything you guys want to do or anyone you want to talk to or check into before we dock with aos uh yeah nothing else from astro he's just gonna assume a position at the bridge while we dock astro didn't you tell her about blue alert um, I always forget about Blue Alert. That was probably the weakest movie in the franchise. As Rock just mutters to himself, oh my god, there's actually Blue Alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we made some poor decisions. They were never supposed to be zombie movies. I don't know what we were thinking. I'm going to have to keep a list of all these movie titles, don't I? Aren't I? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I should have, have a running to, list going on here. If I have to make a separate set of notes for the fucking movies Astro has been in, I'm going to be a little. My what, my jimmies are going to be a little. Notes are rustled. more important, Bob. Really, I mean. Oh, you're right. I'll just delete all these things that say uh, payment for mission. And, yeah, we can be these. paid in Astro movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I can think of a whole one person who would like that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the most important list is the list of the movies made by Astro's rivals. We don't really care too much about the Astro. <laughs> yeah. Does Astro, <laughs> hey, there's a there's a thing. Does Astro have any rivals that he would like talk about or bring up to anyone? Do you like or or is it just basically like the suits hit Terratella? <laughs> So, uh, well, definitely the suits and Teratella, but that's a good point. I haven't actually given that any thought, but I think maybe we could develop that in a future session. It, it'd be cool if he had like a rival actor or actress. Yeah. Um, and they're always like stealing <laughs> roles from each other. All right. Well, anyone else? Uh, because we are coming up on the station now. I know. I know. I got responses from some of you. Uh, Dine would just head back to the, the medical bay and just take that time to relax. All right. I'll probably be working the entire time. And, uh, you know, as is a tradition with uh, mech-based uh, media, uh, we're going to wait to describe your mechs uh, until um, we get to, uh, like, the hero shot where you guys are actually using them for cool shit. Uh, I assume the shot we get of you working on stuff in the mech bay is, like, one of those close-up shots where it's just you with, like, an open metal panel next to you and you're working on stuff in there. Um, but we can tell that there's something cool you're working on. All right. Nice. So, uh, you guys approach AO Station. It is giant uh when i say it's a large station i mean it's the size of a of a large modern earth city um it is large enough you could get lost in for days if you don't know where you're going it's it's like a it's like an orbiting new york yeah uh maybe maybe smaller it's not you're not you guys aren't core word essentially you guys are kind of on the periphery of um the cygnus state uh that is the uh the kind of nation state you all are a part of Mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean i assume that uh you know there's probably even larger ones towards the center of uh their sphere of control but out here in the periphery this is this is like one of the largest place places for several jumps in any direction so are we talking like the size of the floating countries in space from g gundam (laughs) probably probably or like a flying chicago or something like (laughs) that you know that sounds terrifying (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we've pivoted this this show is now a horror um, uh all right yeah so uh you guys pull in um the you guys uh i would say um now now i as the gm uh graham slash rock how would you like me to refer to you in character do you want me to call you rock or graham narratively uh probably rock Rock. Okay, so Rock. Uh, as we approach AO Station, um, it only takes a little bit. It, it's a mostly automated system because of the amount of volume they have to deal with on a regular basis. Um, you don't actually have to call in and talk to anyone. Uh, you ping the station. It basically automatically assigns you a berth, and you see a um, a hard light screen on the side of the station go down, and uh, some docking lights start to illuminate where you're supposed to land. Um, it's fairly standard fare, um, but I will tell you that the, um, the berth that you guys, uh, land in is, is pretty big. Uh, the hangar in which the DBC sets down is very large, maybe a hundred meters wide and almost as deep, um, more than enough for the DBC to set down and likely accessible to ships almost twice as large as you. Um, the rectangular opening the D DBC enters through, uh, as soon as you get in, fills behind you with a hard light barrier, permitting the room to fill back up with atmosphere. Uh, on the opposite wall uh, from where you entered, um, there are two large cargo transport systems that allow the movement of large size crates, supplies, and other various things through the transport arteries of AO Station. Uh, and then on either side, to the left and right of the hangar, there are metal airlock doors you see that uh, you, uh, got, you all would know from being here before lead to kind of like uh, a run, run, uh, like a runner kind of space between hangars that gives you access to to lifts that you can ride to access the rest of the civilian accessible parts of the station okay well, right. uh, well we'll bring the ship in um yeah. and uh, after we uh after we land everything i'll look over at astro and go all right uh if you're gonna go get the payment i think i will help resupply the ship that sounds like a plan. And then maybe uh, we'll have some time for some R&R &R on station. Okay. You look for a movie theater, and I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> They're no fun. It's the same I'll... thing every time. <laughs> uh, as you all are setting down and getting ready to get off ship... Um, Dine, uh, you will notice uh, in the med bay, kind of at one of your personal terminals as you're kind of just relaxing, waiting to, to get into port. Um, okay. You notice a notification on your terminal start to blink. Uh, and remember, oh, right, Torse told me that I had a message. I will go over to my terminal and open this message. All right. Uh, as you open it up, um, there it, it opens up... Um, and it is definitely a message that's been sent to you, probably being held on station at like a relay beacon. Um, it is not formatted at all. It's it doesn't look it looks like someone it looks like someone emailed you a like a like a notepad document um, it is the least <laughs> professional way you could possibly get a mail. Um, and, uh, at the top, instead of a greeting, it just has a name on it. We're saying Reedy, uh, R E E D Y. Um, R E E D Y. Okay. Yes. You know, Reedy, uh, Dine, uh, worked with him before. Uh, Reedy is an older man, uh, who was part of a previous outfit that you worked with called the particulars. Um, you all disbanded semi agreeably uh, after the one who ran everything kind of bit the bullet in a complicated job once. But uh, Reedy likes to kind of keep in touch with all of you still. Um, and he basically sent you along a notepad um, of, <laughs> of poorly assembled information. Um, oh, what good. you get. Yeah, what you get is a message uh, that uh, says there is a bar on station called The Mooring. Um, 
and the person who runs that bar is named Tessie Mendels. Um, Reedy has heard that you're going to be in that in that station uh, and thought that he would send you some information on her. Uh, apparently, she's better connected than she lets on, and it's no accident she's gained the respect of private operators in the sector. Um, he thinks you might want to check her out while you're on station. Okay. Uh, Dime will definitely make a note of that and plan on paying that bar a visit. All right. Uh, do you guys gather together as you get off the ship, or do you guys kind of leave <clears throat> one at a time? Like, how, how, do, how do you guys enter the station? Well, um, I know Graham said something about overseeing. Do you say you, you're going to oversee some repairs or something? No, I, I said I was going to help resupply. I was going to go to Torso and talk listening. to I wasn't listening. Was, I was thinking about what a mistake blue alert was. Okay. <laughs> Still <laughs> keeps me up at night. Well, anyway, that sounds good. I'll head to the Tarotella offices. Um, All right. Well, um, interestingly, uh, as the kind of uh, as the uh, gangplank uh, the the future. What is that called on a spaceship? <laughs> I've, I've actually never looked it up. When when a spaceship lands and like the yeah. little thing comes down from it that you get to walk down, what do they call that? I don't it's know for sure, sure but I think plank, it's still it? called it's like, a gangplank. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a space it's, gangplank or something, right? A, a space plank, if you would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so gang anyway, plank, a movable bridge used in boarding or leaving a ship at a pier. I mean, yeah. yeah. It qualifies, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, it's, this is a this is a pier. I'm doing air quotes while I say that. Um, <laughs> space pier. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, as it kind of lowers, uh, those of you who've kind of gathered together uh, to get off the ship right away are all there. Um, uh, Torse has met up with you, um, and as you guys are like at the end and like uh, it's it's starting to open up. Um, it, she's about to start talking to you about something uh, as you all hear a loud noise um, as the gangplank kind of lowers down and you get a better view unobstructed by the walls of your own ship. Um, you can see that one of the transport bays in the back of the um, hangar has started moving on its own. It's kind of opened up to the internal um like system of conveyors and claw machine things almost that kind of move cargo around the station quickly. Uh, it's opened up and there's actually far in the distance, like a person just standing by the large open door. Hmm. Does it look like anyone we know? Uh, far away they, they okay, you're looking so at them basically from the 50 yard line of a football field gotcha yeah uh, is, so is our the ship the only one in the hangar yes yeah it is a private berth um it is it is allotted to you because you guys can also store cargo in here and stuff this this entire you've rented this entire space essentially and, and someone's oh, basically nice. in, in it Someone has just come into it, yes, um, through to... through the cargo transport system, which is normally not how people enter. Right. I'll turn to to uh, Torse and say, were we expecting anyone uh, upon arrival to uh, greet us? N no. Uh, I I mean, you haven't told me to expect anyone, Captain. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Well, that's because I wasn't expecting anyone. Uh, let's go see what they might have to say. I'll we'll start go heading talk in to that them. direction. Okay. Uh, as you guys kind of hit the ground and start moseying over, um, you'll hear uh, the noise of the cargo system kind of like coming alive uh, as basically these giant crane hooks are traveling along these pathways, these internal pathways uh, of the station. Uh, this is a really dumb reference, but you know, like the, the conveyors that carry all the doors in Monsters, Inc., right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah Basically, yeah. what it looks like beyond that door. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah. Except it's like giant cargo containers that it's lifting around everywhere. Is um, he in a, a cargo container then? Uh, as you get closer, uh, you notice that it is a she and someone oh. you know. Excuse um, me. 
as the uh, as the system comes alive, it starts depositing crates at the entrance of your kind of like uh, receiving area of your of your hangar. Um, a person you notice as you um, get there. Um, she is of average height uh, and built with ri- like and she's of average height and built and she has like a rigid posture standing very straight. Uh, her hair is blonde and tied back and held with a, like a very understated silver pin. Um, she wears a blue pantsuit with a single lapel pin uh, depicting a cartoon bear that has a uh, a baseball oh, bat no. next to it. <laughs> A cartoon bear that has a baseball bat? Yes, said? that is correct. Okay. Is it Yogi Berra? It is Yogi Berra, the cartoon bear. Um, That's great. Uh, you know, I knew I wanted her to wear something like that. I'm just glad something came up that I could use so quickly. It was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what you do. Wow. You, you play to find out what happens. It's um, now canon. It's now canon. Good um, God. And uh, yeah, this is Rhea Reyes. Uh, You all know her as the local representative for Terratella stationed at the regional plant branch in AO station. She seems to be standing impatiently waiting for all of you. I was going to say as you walk up, I don't think you're supposed to leave your garbage in private hangars. Uh, She looks up from her uh, clipboard and she looks over to the materials and she's like... (sighs) garbage fine we can dispose of it for you i won't even charge you a fee <laughs> i'll just say i, I uh, like her i'll just say uh, ray i didn't expect you to come all the way down here i was gonna head up to your offices as hard as it for you to uh, imagine uh, people don't operate on your time uh, i didn't want to wait around all day to see when you'd show up well, here we are. And here we are. She motions over to the stack of crates that is piling up. Uh, I'll just need you to sign. And she hands you her clipboard. Uh, of course. Sign here. Uh, right uh, here. Uh, uh, uh. As, as Torse <laughs> kind of like shoulder checks into you and grabs the uh, <laughs> clipboard out of your hand. Uh, she like... <laughs> just like looks over the top of it at Rhea and starts to like closely examine the uh, clipboard. Rhea is just standing there with her arms crossed. Corsé, <laughs> my eyes and ears. She reads things so I don't have to. Yeah, Rhea just kind why. of nods it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I feel like there's been at least one incident where you signed something you should not have, and this is why she does it now. I mean, to be fair, Astro, you probably would be able to read better if you weren't always wearing those damn big sunglasses. Hey, GQ magazine says these are in style now, so I'm going to keep them on. GQ, of course, standing for Galactic Quasar, the future magazine. (laughs) What other magazine could I be talking about? Uh, So, uh, all of a sudden, you hear Torse, like, just like in a huff kind of like pull down the clipboards like what is this Rhea well your payment it's what you qualified for what does uh, it say Torse uh, holds it up uh, to all of you uh, to take a look at it um, and points out the the parts um, that are relevant um, basically indicating uh, lack of competence um, general disrespect for decorum, um, a lack of professionalism, um, and uh, then cites uh, standard payment uh, with it cites standard payment with no deductions. Now, wait a second. We did the job and we put our lives at risk. What is this? Right. It's one of the best exactly. reviews I've ever gotten. Standard payment with no reductions. You're well on your way to being respectable. What's this lack of professionalism? 
uh, Torse speaks up. That that isn't even the thing. This was this was a mission that had significant risk. There is a clause in the contract we sound, signed for you know danger pay. We had to fight. <sighs> And we were told this was just going to be a fairly routine escort mission. Well, escort missions are routine until you're fired upon, and then that's why you're there for an escort. And had we not been there, that whole that whole convoy would have been uh, in a million pieces, I would say. Oh, well, from... Let's see what... It says here that the officer on the scene, uh, Captain Cleos Pell, uh, reported that with your assistance, uh, their ships took to significant damage. I mean, we did all we could. Uh, We were facing some highly trained pirates. Did he define significant? Uh, No, no, he did not. Huh. Seems strange to cut something off such of an ambiguous word. Well, he is the acting representative on field. I oh. could request the paperwork for you if you want a detailed report. Yes, actually, I would like that. Okay. Are you going to be on the station for the next month? No. I would like that regardless, though. All right. Well, then we'll have it forwarded to you. I can also forward along to you all the comments Captain Cleos Pell had about you as well, if you'd wish. I left them out because they were a little unprofessional for my taste. And yet you take his word over ours. I'm not in charge of your reimbursement. I am simply fulfilling your contract. I don't think that's the the, the hill you want to stand on here, Astro. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just reputation's everything in this job. I don't like being called unprofessional. My crew, they put their lives at risk. I couldn't ask for a more professional crew. Looks at each of you. While this is, I'm sure, a rousing uh, team bonding experience for all of you, I have work to do. Uh, If you would please sign the clipboard. Fine. Um, He'll take it uh, and sign on the dotted line. Thank you. If you need any more jobs, um, you might want to look elsewhere. Oh, yeah, well, well, let's just say I've heard some things. Maybe you should uh, see how your friend Fred is doing. Anyway, good day. She leaves. We want that report laminated. (laughs) <laughs> I just nod my head <laughs> <laughs> she she does not leave by the cargo uh, ports she does go to like one of the normal airlocks to head back to the lifts um, but yeah she kind of leaves you all with uh, some crates um, that are that are still coming in um, standard payment uh, is less than um, Torse was kind of relying on um, and kind of put into your budget um, but it is enough to kind of keep going you're not in an emergency situation it's just you're not really you didn't you didn't get what you expected you would Um Torse kind of like takes a look at the at the cargo coming in and says, well, I mean, I'll have the maintenance guys for the station start getting out their forklifts and getting it into place until we're ready to load it onto the onto the ship. (sighs) She just like scratches the back of her head as she looks exasperated. Well, I was hoping we'd get another job on station. Um, Well, Let's not look for a job from Terratella. I just don't think uh, they like you very much, Astro. Not at all. Yeah, was, Guys, I, was, I, was, um, <clears throat> I know I've said this before and you usually turn me down, but we could go a little underboard 
for something, get a little bit more pay than what these people give us. I mean, sounds sketchy. Yes. I'm already it on is. thin ice with some of these mega corps. I'm trying to, trying to build out our reputation a little bit as a, a group that they can trust. Yeah, well, the mega corps will always try to underpay you. That's just what they do. Yeah, I'm starting to realize that. Um, but by the way, uh, before the uh, we did that last uh, escort mission, Astro had contacted. He had a contact uh, in tele uh, in uh, the tele. Uh, what's it called? Terra 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 Terra. Yeah. Um <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, so he here's, him, was here's that how to, Fred? That's Fred. Uh, here's how yeah. to remember it. It's literally the the shortening of Terra, as in the planet, um, and telecom or telecommunications. It's it's basically like what if a what if a entertainment company was called like Earth Entertainment, right? Like it's it's Terra Tele, as in Terra Telecommunications. Makes sense. So, yeah, Astro had called up Fred, uh, who is kind of like his uh, contact at Terratella, uh, to get some information about, like, the possible pirates in the area. Uh, and I guess he looked into something and and it got flagged and he had to end the call abruptly. And I, I didn't know what ha what became of him until just now. Uh, uh when uh she said something kind of ominous uh so so um uh, i think Astro is gonna look a little worried and he's gonna say hmm i hope i didn't get fred into too much trouble here well as Hello. you guys kind of see the materials getting loaded into the hangar um torse uh gets back from like walking over to the um terminal that's by the airlock uh, and says okay well i put in a work order they're going to bring down a uh forklift um for <laughs> us and and have someone at least gather these up by the ship we can we can deal with loading everything on when at our convenience Sounds right. good. Thanks, Torse. <laughs> and she kind of like doesn't look you in the eyes, Astro. She like looks around. It's like, uh, so what are you all doing on station? Well, I thought we could use a little R and R. Maybe hit up a restaurant or a bar. Uh, maybe if there's time, the movie theater. I don't know. Just spitballing here. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm planning on hitting a bar, specifically one called the Mooring. Oh, oh. is have a reputation around here? Uh, well, I don't know, but the bartender certainly does. Well, that sounds fun. Her. Um. This might be uh, a bad time to ask, boss, since we just got uh, our pay cut a little bit. But um, I had something I was uh, going to do on station and I don't I mean, are we going to cut into our discretionary budget? Um, oh, uh, well, of course, Torse, uh, take care of whatever business you need. Are you sure? Um, yeah. Oh, thank You've you. She gives you a big hug. Oh. Anything you need help with, Torse? No, it's just um, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want it to get in the way of your last mission. But I was hoping that we'd get back in time. Um, a band I'm really into is playing on station tomorrow, um, and I wanted to get tickets. <clears throat> ah, sounds great. Anyone I might know? Have you heard about Tessellate? Tessellate? I know their bass guitarist. Good guy. Really? Can you can you get me a meeting? Uh yeah. Let, let's uh let's uh I'll try to call around. I'm sure I can. Oh, thank you so much. I need to go buy these tickets before they sell out. Uh but I'll stay in touch. Bye. And she leaves. 
And then after she leaves, Bye. Dine says, well, I was going to ask her to give me an updated inventory report, but I think I'll wait till after the concert. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's a bit of a mediaphile, but maybe we really should have Astro sign power of attorney over to her. <laughs> Astro's like, it's not a bad idea. God, I, God, I wish it was. I wish it was there in the scene. <laughs> oh yeah, are you back on the ship still? So yeah, my, my uh, Evelyn's plan is basically was hoping you'd go up to the office, and then she would sneak out before you got her to watch a movie. So she's basically, oh, so right now. I like to think she's actually at the edge on the space plank or whatever, watching you guys talk, thinking like. Why aren't they leaving? <laughs> <laughs> what? What's, what's going on? You're just peeking around the corner outside the door. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't... I. Evelyn has decided that she does not want to see this movie, so she's trying to sneak out. All right, well, Darn, I never labeled you much of a drinker. How do you know this bar? Is it any good? Uh, uh, well, an old friend told me about the barkeep. So, I figure I may as well... Go to the bar, see how it is, talk to the barkeep. Maybe Mind we can I find you. a job there. Sure. Uh, I wouldn't Ooh. mind tagging along myself, but uh, I'm going to make a few calls first. Where's this bar? We'll uh, meet you there. Yeah, <laughs> send me directions <laughs> on my terminal. The Unfortunately, I don't quite know. I suppose it, should be, it shouldn't be too hard to find, though. What's the what's the bar's name again? The Mooring. The Mooring. Okay. All right. Well, I'll catch you there. Ten bucks without one of us. Can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guys... Yeah. So. Uh... Well, yeah. Please go ahead, Charles. I said, do you guys do you guys actually leave? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking that Evelyn was going to run to a bar anyway. I like the idea of you got, she ending up at the bar, despite not actually being told you guys were going to meet at the bar. Uh, well, you're in luck, uh, because the Mooring is, like, the largest, most notorious bar for people like you all on the station. Um, mm -hmm. So if you were just looking for a bar to go to, it yeah. is actually very likely that that's the one you'd be going to. Oh, that works. Well, good enough. <clears throat> all right so um i assume you're all gonna head on to station now so i'm just gonna give you a little bit of background on aos uh the station is large and filled with uh commercial residential and administrative districts um there's a fair amount of things that you can access on station the lifts the between the hangars kind of just get you out of the hangar and engineering area of the station up onto kind of where where civilian foot traffic and stuff and uh and um almost like uh a tr like a almost like a subway type system kind of goes around the station right like like horizontal movement wise it's it's like a wide and flat station you know like one of those floating ring stations almost mm -hmm. uh, it's just like this lower <laughs> segment that the lifts go down to is where they keep all the engineering and the births and and all that kind of stuff um so after you take the turbo lifts up um you kind of like everything's divided up into different sectors um and uh, let's just uh, start with Astro first. Uh, you said you wanted to check something out before uh, heading to the bar later. Yeah, so I want to see about um, arranging a meetup with uh, Torse and the band. Um, I was wondering if this could be uh, a use of one of my skill triggers, which is get a hold of something. Maybe I could place a few calls, like maybe my agent knows the band or something and... Um, you which know, agent? Uh, what's that? <laughs> which agent? Well, uh, oh, uh, I'm sure uh, you've had so many. I think <laughs> uh, I think that gives me uh, a a good little on ramp here um, to uh, talk about uh, your contact, Astro. Um, mm -hmm. Who is like that is that is probably who you'd have to go through. Who is your agent? Uh, my agent. Her name is Roxana Kaplaner. Um, she's been my agent the whole time, actually. Very, very good agent, and I've been uh, loyal to her. I've, I've kept her on. She's She got me all my big roles. Um, and every now and then, Astro uh, will check in with her to see if there are any 
any odd acting jobs that uh, he could do, and the answer is almost always no. The blacklist is pretty extensive, um, but he tries to, uh, you know, keep abreast of any opportunities and stay optimistic. All right, so Roxana is who you'd be kind of getting this message to. Um, yeah. Now, uh, we've talked about this in uh, our learning session a little bit, but kind of as some background on the the kind of like tech level of the universe you all are in. Um, so uh, inter interstellar travel is not the easiest thing to come along. Um, you guys having a jump enabled ship is actually what makes you desirable as like a team of mercenaries. Um, a lot of people have to uh, take a much slower means of conveyance between systems. Um, usually <coughs> jump uh, jump drives are reserved for rich people uh, like most things. Um military outfits and uh like large corporation ships and and hauling companies um there is a system at the edge there is a process at the edge of every system um that has basically a a warp gate that opens up uh well, it depends on the system you're in. Uh, you all know, because you've been here a few times, that the warp gate that activates at the edge of the system for um, for Archie uh, only opens every four days. Um, so basically, you have to take those things into account if you're a different type of ship. You would travel to the edge of the system, wait until it opens up, ride it to the next system over, and then get to the next gate you want to travel out of and wait for it to open. And if you plan things well, you can catch it pretty quickly and kind of make a, a, a rather speedy transit. But it's the same kind of thing where, like, you know how you're having a day where you just keep hitting red lights over and over? You can also have that kind of thing delay your trip by weeks at a time if you get to a gate that isn't going to open for another four days and have to basically wait for it to open back up again. Um, as such, uh, information uh, traveling between systems also is a little difficult. Um, you would be able to place a call on a terminal to basically anyone within the same system as you pretty easily. Um, but uh, your your agent, uh, Roxanne, um, is not in this system uh she's back towards the core uh you have used uh technology once before to make one of these like long distance real-time calls essentially uh but it is costly uh the kind of entanglement uh level uh communications equipment is basically like calling long distance and paying like an extravagant surcharge so you will know that anytime you call long distance you are eating into your supply a little bit mm. What about uh, like sending a email or a message? Uh, that would depend on the gates opening as well. But when the gate opens, the transit is instant. Um, they're basically in every system are um, almost like relay beacons. So when you send an email, it basically gets shipped out to the nearest relay beacon that hangs out by the gate. And then when the gate opens, the beacon sends it through the gate to the beacon on the other side. So every time the gates open, information is transmitted. So like when you guys are reading a newspaper or up to date information on terminals in the system, they're only as up to date as the information that's made its way here is. So if you're a few weeks away from the core, the information you're getting about what's happening in the core systems is also a few weeks out of date. Mm. All right. Well, it might be it might be. Uh difficult to uh contact roxana uh the concert's tomorrow so uh i think <laughs> astro will uh, call the venue itself uh and see if maybe he can get a hold of the band's manager okay uh yeah you place a local call um you're not really sure where you're trying to get to so you can you can kind of pull up the directory uh for the system itself um when you get them on the line, um, it is what sounds to be an exasperated uh, man on the other side of the line who's like, yeah, uh, who's this? Uh, hi there, Astro Jammin. <laughs> he waits for... Okay, uh, yeah, okay, who is it? 
No, seriously, it's 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 Astro himself. I'm on your fine station, uh, and I heard uh, Tessellate. Is that is that the band Tes Tessellate? Yes, um, Tessellate is the band. Tessellate is performing today. I'm I'm a friend of their bass guitarist. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Astro, um. Oh, man, we have so much going on. All right, all right. If if you are who you say you are, maybe I'll get him the message. I don't know. How do I know it's you? I'll come down if you'd like. Uh, why don't you give me a pilot skill check to try and convince him to work with you? Okay. Um... He just asked you to list off all the movies you've been in. <laughs> <laughs> so, no uh, does a list that extensive. <laughs> uh, in Lancer, uh, pilot skill checks are all D20 rolls. Uh, basically, if you get a 10 or up, you've succeeded. Um, you can also activate anything that your pilot is specifically good at to get a little bit of a bonus on the roll um, to, to kind of like leverage your skills and experience. Um, also, if you're doing anything novel or interesting, I might give you accuracy on the roll as a different bonus that we'll get into when we use it. Um, or if I consider something particularly difficult, I might make you add difficulty to the roll, which can modify your results negatively. Um, right now, uh, I mean, or do you think you have any skill triggers that you can activate for this? Uh, well, there's get a hold of something where I can um, uh, get a hold of useful allies, assets, or connections through wealth or social influence. And I am very wealthy and I am very socially uh, influential. Okay. Um, all right. So... I would say that definitely applies here. You are kind of uh, requesting like a temporary connection. Um, so I'll let you go ahead and roll your d20, and then you have a plus two to get a hold of something. So go ahead and give me a d20 plus two. All right. Uh, I rolled a 16. I rolled a 14 plus two is a 16. All right. Nice. Um, in that case, uh, yeah, absolutely. He goes, all right, look, uh, we're real busy. He's he's working on stuff right now. But if you are who you say you are uh, and then he gives you kind of like the address for where the um, the they're kind of like doing their backstage setup stuff, you come on down. And if you check out, I'll let you in to see him. Ah, thanks. You're the best. What's your name? Uh, I totally gave him a name. Hold on. <laughs> I didn't have a long time. Uh, uh, his name is uh, Toe Lissett. Toe Lissett. Uh, I'll, I'll bring you an autographed poster of Deathbot Chronicles. Uh, all right. I got to go now. Bye. <laughs> the terminal screen just shuts off. <laughs> All right. Um, Why do I have so, a feeling there's a room in the DBC that's just full of Astro Jam and memorabilia? Yeah. <laughs> of course there Signed is. Because there is. <laughs> <laughs> because there is. It's all he has left. That's <laughs> 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 really very sad. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, all right. Well, uh, w with that information, he will head over towards the venue. All right. And uh, while you're doing that, and that makes sense while you're out and about then, uh, let's jump over to uh, Rock and Dine uh, as you guys head to the mooring. Um, as you guys get there, uh, you'll notice that it is actually a pretty cool looking place. Uh, it is a large uh, bar um, and it has kind of a prime position on the station. Um, so you can imagine it's it's a pretty sought after space. Um, the mooring was definitely built with the view in mind. Two walls of the bar are dedicated to external views looking out upon the star and the center of the Archie system. Uh, it has tables and booths built to have sight of them. 
The bar counter itself is a large rectangle built into the middle of the large room with stools around it, some already occupied with occupied-looking customers. In the center of the counter area, a pillar of illuminated bar shelving houses various bottles and terminal screens. Above the shelves in large neon letters, the word bar stares down at you. Around the room, upholstered seating booths and high-top tables divide up the space. The ceiling is high, with structural metal beams and vents exposed. The floor is mostly metal plates, with metal grates in some portions. <clears throat> Patrons of different types are seated in booths, standing and sitting in loose, loose groups around high-top tables, or moving around the space generally, most of them with drinks in hand. There is the constant hum of crowd noise as people socialize and conduct their business. You can hear the faint noise of a pumping beat um, that sounds like a very turned down radio uh, going over the entire place. And you can tell that from closer towards the terminal screens on, uh, they must have their sound activated as well as the people close to the screen seem to be paying attention to what's on them. Well, uh, so we are looking for Tessie Mendels, the one of the she's the, what the barkeep. So um, I'll look for some open seats by the actual bar where the bartenders tend to be. All right. Yeah. As you guys approach the bar, uh, it's it's um, it's steady without being busy. Uh, there is a. <clears throat> The, the space doesn't feel crowded except for in what's noticeably one corner of the room where a large group of people is all kind of like huddled together very loudly um, and boisterously. Um, but over here by the, uh, the bar proper, you guys are able to find a couple of stools that aren't crowded in by a bunch of people next to you uh, and are able to take seats at the bar. I'll uh, call over the nearest barkeep and order a beer. Uh, and as you do, um, a woman does come over to you. Um, she is, uh, below average height with an athletic frame. Uh, she has long, straight black hair with gray more evident in the front <clears throat> and non-uniform streaks. Uh, she wears a blue bl button-up blouse with iridescent floral pattern on it. And over top of that, she has a gray apron with pockets along the front. Um, she has identical golden loop earrings in either ear and a golden string necklace with a single opal hanging off of it. She has on what look to be uh, light blue jeans with like black, like padded work shoes, uh, as you notice her walking over the long part of the bar towards both of you. Uh, she kind of pulls up to both of you and just, hi, how you doing? What can I get for you? Uh, well, I think I could use a beer. What about <laughs> right? you, Rock? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. A uh, beer? I mean, do you guys want a drink menu or... Oh, what do you have in the house? I mean, we have various things uh, on tap, or do you want cans, you know? Uh, I'll have special on tap. Whatever. Okay, you, you the same? Uh, eh, maybe I will look at a menu. <laughs> all right. Uh, she just reaches down behind the counter across from you all and, like, pulls out a little, uh, little folded over, like, two-page leather-bound uh, drink menu. Um, as you open it, uh, you do see that there's a list of, like, four different beers on tap, um, a small list of, like, uh, their different types of liquors and a couple of uh, mixed drinks that are called house specialties. Uh, and then also a listing of different canned beverages you can get, uh, including, you know, beer uh ciders um various various uh carbonated beverages and and the like um she has already started pouring uh for dine uh something out of a tap and kind of like slides it over to you you know well thank you very much do you uh, have a you know card what? or do you want to start a tab uh, i'll pay with card and i'll just uh hand her a card all right She'll she'll take it and like set it down on the on the kind of like little table behind her. Uh, you, you know what? I'll I'll just take whatever you recommend, whatever you think is best. Uh, and you can just charge it to the DBC hanger. Uh, all right. Yeah, I can I can find it. Don't worry about it. 
uh, she'll walk over and she'll uh, she'll actually grab a uh, like another mug. And you'll notice pour you the exact same thing that she just gave Dine and just kind of like set it in front of you. Who are you looking for again, Dine? Uh, what was her name? Oh, yes. Uh, Tessie. Tessie Mendels. And you're saying this out loud? Yes. Oh, and who gave you that name? Uh, uh, an old uh, teammate of mine. An older man by the name of Reedy. Reedy. Huh. And what do you want Tessie for? Well, my name is uh, Dine Starseeker. I'm currently in the... I just finished a job, and I happen to be looking for another one. Me and my uh, crew that I'm a part of. Just wondering if Tessie might uh, might know of any opportunities. Well, seeing as I'm Tessie, um, yeah, I'm the right person to ask. What are your <clears throat> names? Well, I did just give mine. I'm Dine Starseeker. He nods at you. Uh, y- you can call me Rock. All right, and... When I say who are you, I mean who are you representing? Uh, oh. Well, the DBC? Yeah, our ship is the DBC. All right, ship crew. Uh, what are you good at? What do you need? Because we're probably well, good at it. I don't need it. anything, but I know a whole lot of people. I can get you in touch. Well, we, are, uh, we do have a full four-man Lancer squad, so I suppose that means we can do quite a few things. Be it escort, or combat, or... Uh, number of things you'll notice that when you say that uh you'll both just kind of notice her like like look at you not a praise like appraisingly but also disbelievingly a little bit she says four man lancer team right with a ship with a jump drive and everything she looks more unbelieving (laughs) now after you said that (laughs) Well, you guys are actually Lancer certified. You're not just MC pilots. Oh, no, we are. We are most certainly Lancer certified. Well, <laughs> I've definitely seen my fair share of action over the years. She she like laughs under her breath and is like, <sighs> Look, no offense, I, but I haven't heard of a group makeout like that, like uh, <laughs> except for in movies, uh, you know, for uh, elite operators on a small ship. I'll just start laughing when she says movies. Don't, don't, Dine. <laughs> Listen. I won't say a word. I'll just start laughing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do that. I say don't, don't. <laughs> Listen, I well, don't obviously really... obviously I've walked into something funny. <laughs> Look, I, I, I don't really care if you believe us or not. That's not important to me. The fact is that if you know people that want to get something done, we're the people to do it. And from the sounds of things, you're the one that should be looking for us. Like I said, I'm not looking for anyone, but if any of my friends uh, need some work done, I know who to send them to now. Yes, well, I mean, we'll be here around the station for the next couple of days at the very least, so if your friends have any jobs that need to be done, they can contact us directly at the DBC. And I expect you had better be getting a decent commission for finding such exemplary Lancer pilots. <laughs> she, she like, like, her, her, she's, she's generally unfazed, you know, like that's kind of like her her normal affect is kind of like a disinterested. Uh, but she, you can see the corner of her her mouth quirk up a little bit uh, as you say that. Um, but uh, interruptingly, um, a, a person sits down at the stool right next to uh, right next to Grant uh, Rock. Um, a uh, a. Well, really, it's hard to describe him as anything but extra. Um, a man of low average height and moderate build uh, kind of plops down uh, into the stool next to you, Rock, uh, kind of barging into your personal space and conversation. Um He's wearing a black billed hat with two giant white X's on it. Uh, He's wearing a black T-shirt with a white slash going from shoulder to hip, uh, covered by a black leather jacket with various buttons and zippers all over it. Um, The right arm of his jacket stops at the shoulder, 
where starting from his torso, his entire right arm has been replaced by a cybernetic prosthetic, black and boxy with a set of hinged telescoping pneumatics coming from the back of the elbow. Um, His pants are black fabric as well, but he wears white sneakers for some reason, you notice. Um, And just kind of barges in the conversation and goes, what, these newbies? (sighs) Go away. Oh, and uh, who might you be, sir? Uh, he just kind of leans across you, Rock, to, like, address Dine. He goes, <laughs> I work with a real Merc crew. Who the fuck are you guys? I don't say anything. <laughs> I just drink my beer. Neither do I. <laughs> All right, I just well, I'm sounds my like beer. a couple of heroes who call themselves Lancers have decided to come to our little side of the galaxy here. What's it like out there seeing all those big stars? Well, we certainly don't have such fine hats. Oh, I'm seeing you admire the merchandise. Uh, he looks you up and down and goes, sorry, I can't repay the compliment. Right. <laughs> well, as, if you have any business, t- you can feel free to talk to us, I suppose. Uh, as he's talking to you, you notice from the corner of the bar that has like this loose association of very rowdy looking people. Some more of them are starting to like drift in your direction. Um, a a middle aged woman and an older man uh, kind of like come up behind this one and kind of stand over his shoulders. Uh, the woman uh, is tall and wiry. Her hair is long and curly brown about shoulder length, and she wears a long long sleeve v-neck olive t-shirt with brown leather vest over top and tan pants noticeably she has a brown leather belt on with a holstered shotgun and ammo loops like readily loaded and apparent uh on her outfit um it's pretty normal to be armed walking around i'm assuming it's normal to be armed this strikes you as show-offy armed it's like in one of those loose holders such that like the shotgun almost like leans out a little bit like it would get in the way kind of Mm -hmm. Uh, like it leans out from her leg a little bit like begging to be lifted out of the holster okay um as they kind of like come over and stand behind, uh, you'll notice uh, the the larger man um, kind of looks down at the uh, the younger man in all black. Just goes, Ugh, "Come on, you can't just start fights with every dipshit who comes into the bar." And he like looks back and forth from the man to you guys, and he goes, "You didn't hear any of that." The the, the man just like shakes his head at him. Um, you notice the woman uh, look over in your direction and just say, eh, who are you? And specifically like mine or Dine's looking direction? At, yeah, looking at you since you're closest. Okay. Rock? <laughs> part of the DBC crew? Just got into DBC. spaceport? Yeah, you uh, looking for jobs? Uh, I'll look over at my finely dressed friend next to me and then back at her and go, I guess it depends a little bit on who's asking. The uh, the large man who came over kind of like note like more notices you more than he did now that you've you've talked. Uh, He was kind of just focused on the other guy uh, when he walked over. Oh, you're going to have to leave then. (laughs) He just crosses his arms. Uh, are are you someone I should know about? Name's Finn. Guess not. Well, I guess you better learn real quick, because listen here, Barrel's in town, and we're first dibs on any jobs that come up. Barrel? Look up. Never heard of Barrel. They, uh. like, look at each other. Uh, the woman goes... Listen, you don't have to know who we are, but stay out of our way. You don't look like much. 
Uh, I look over at the bartender lady. I'm assuming she's listening to all this. Yeah, she's there. She's just like standing behind the counter. Uh, she's just watching silently. Okay. She doesn't. She doesn't seem disturbed by this, but nor is she like doing anything about it. I'll just kind of like stand up and go. Look, there's enough jobs for everyone here. I'm sure. Don't need to fight about this, right? Uh, the man who sat down next to you uh, kind of like stands up to match you, uh, and he goes. I don't know. Maybe there's a problem here. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're small fries. Maybe you deserve to be, uh, you know, picked out of the picked out of the running a little bit. Uh, question: What kind of shotgun is in her? Is being shown off? Uh, it's like, um, it's like a long, I like, a like long a double barrel. Single bar- no, it's oh, like okay. a long single barrel shotgun. Um, it's, it's light enough that you could like, it's, it's probably one that you could hold in one hand. Um, it's, it's like a, it looks like it might be a breech load shotgun. There's probably like one round in it. Okay. Um, seeing that then what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, kick the shotgun out of her holster, grab it. And then unload the one shot and fling it at the dude next to me with the uh, hat. Oh, uh, you mean like like eject the bullet, not yeah. like shoot the bullet? No, okay, no, gotcha, no. Gotcha, eject gotcha. the bullet and then just like <laughs> flick or fling it at the dude's like forehead if I can. And All I right, feel yeah. as though that constitutes a show off trigger. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you show off. Yeah. Um, now, what you're doing uh, is an act around uh, an aggressive person with a weapon. So I'm inclined um, to think about this no you know what they this i'm not going to give you difficulty or anything on this because i think this is a good use of kind of like taking the initiative and surprise on this so yeah just go ahead and give me a uh, pilot roll plus your uh, skill trigger for showing off the skill trigger is just a flat two right uh right right now until you get uh more level ups and uh kind of buff it uh right now your show offs uh, like all your skill triggers currently are probably at two okay okay just making sure i have that right uh so i rolled at 16 to make it 18 then nice all right yeah that's (laughs) <laughs> it's definitely enough you uh yeah you do what's expected you kick the uh shotgun up out of her uh out of her holster you grab it you just snap it in half as is the breech uh like the breech loading shotgun just ejects the bullet that spins and like kind of clunk clunk hits the floor and without even like closing again you just like shove it like into the guy's arms and he's so surprised by it he can do nothing but just like grab hold of it and like hold it you know like it's one of those things where you're handed something without expecting it your body just kind of like reacts and grabs the thing you're being handed i'm just gonna say all right well if we're gonna have fun no firearms uh (laughs) yeah you totally you totally take them off guard um i'm going to say about now uh is uh probably seeing uh this commotion happen evelyn you decided you wanted to come up here find a nice bar to just kind of relax at you walk in you take a look around the bars as i described it earlier yep. and you're like looking around for a place to sit you don't clock your friends uh immediately when you walk in until you start hearing a commotion and by the time you turn over to see what the commotion is uh you see rock <laughs> kick a shotgun into the air eject a bullet from it and throw it at a guy uh, so what, what do you what, do well what kind of glass am i drinking out of uh, like, you haven't it, gotten it, a drink yet you like just came in and were like looking for a place to sit oh poor evelyn didn't even get a drink yet <laughs> yeah no you, you got here a little late trying to not be clocked by your friends evelyn finds the stiffest drink in the house <laughs> no, no, I'll, is anyone drinking is anyone like drinking like a bottle or anything uh, you know what? There's probably a, a table near you that has like a like a bottle service, like wine bottle on their table. A wine bottle. Yeah, like oh. a wine bottle. Yeah, wine is not a type of it. alcohol made of grapes, typically. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Here, here. Well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this out. We'll see how it goes. Um, Evelyn's gonna run up and say, like, how much for the bottle? They they like don't understand the question, uh, I, and the lady at the table goes, "I think on the menu it was like eight creds." I, I slapped down a tenner. 
Okay. <laughs> does, just does, take she, the bottle? Does, she, does she get me the bottle? <laughs> they just look at you confused. <laughs> look, look, I don't got. Look, look hun, I don't got enough of time. Are you gonna give me the bottle or not? She like pushes it towards you. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll I'll grab it, take a sniff. Is it any good? I like don't wine. know. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, I just, you know what? Okay, you can tell <laughs> if it's good or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, listen, mm, listen. I was, I was, I was inclined to make you make a pilot skill check, but no, because the book tell the 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 rules say you should make checks if they don't fucking matter. And I don't know if there's any pilot check you could make to be like, hmm, yes, an excellent wine. Yeah. Hey, this, Let's this just, all... It smells. It's yeah. It smells like grapes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's flavor, Bob. I, I, I'm saying is, I'll take a sip and say like, ah, uh, this is probably a waste. Yeah, whatever. It's 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 like I don't know. It's mid card, not bot, not bottom shelf, but not like okay. amazing. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna run up carrying the bottle as a bludgeoning weapon. How's that? <laughs> All right. So uh, from the side of your eyes, uh, Rock and Dine, you see uh, Evelyn just walk into frame, like gripping a wine bottle by the neck, like holding it down next to her like a club. Just yeah. she just like shifts into frame. Um, and then I'll, I'll just w I'll wink the Rock. <laughs> Uh, as this happens, you'll notice the group in the corners got significantly quieter uh, as more of them are starting to, like, kind of, like, take notice of what's happening. When uh, when I see Evelyn walk up, I'll look over at the guy who just got the uh, bullet flicked out of him and go, you know, I happen to be the, the medic on our crew. If you, if you need a Band-Aid, I might be able to find one. Hey, yo, listen, if you guys want to start something, you better make sure you can finish it because you got nice moves and shit, but we got numbers. You got it? Huh. Really? All three of you? Uh, you say this as you turn slightly to behind you to see what, <laughs> and you'll notice that like four more people have broken off from that boisterous group to come over to where you guys are. All right. Uh, I'll look over at, at Dine. <laughs> They're like, huh, it's not worth it. Why don't All we right. head on out? Uh, what I'll say is uh, you'll notice that amongst this group of people who are like walking over, um, there is uh, a couple people who were hanging back, but as they notice the rest of their group kind of walking over, um, a man uh, who's a little bit older kind of like pushes through them and almost parts them like the sea, right? Like it, it, very unchallenged amongst this group, uh, just kind of like pushes through everyone to get up to where you guys are, just like looks back and forth between you guys and uh, the black hat man. Um <coughs> This guy uh, is of average height and full of lean muscle. He has a receding hairline that's buzzed short to his head, and he has a full beard that's close shaven, but both are like a ruddy red color. Uh, he's wearing dark gray coveralls with the sleeves rolled up to above his biceps, which are fairly large. Um, and he ha his uh, coveralls are like slightly open in the front, showing like a light gray undershirt underneath. He walks over and just like looks back and forth between you two. And he just like the guy the, in the black hat who stood up, he just like puts his hand full on his chest and just pushes him out to arm's length and then like steps between the two of you and turns to address only you three and goes, hey, what's going on here? I don't think anything. Uh. Do I recognize this guy? I don't think you would. Okay. Well, oh uh, God, what was the bartender's name again? Tessie. Uh, the Tessie. bartender is Tessie. Yes. Uh, Tess Tessie, you know where to find us if you need us. You'll uh. She, she just kind of like nods at you all uh, and she like nods to you all. And then you see her also like nod at the uh, the man who walked over to kind of like settle things here. Um, and he seems to like take her look and like nod back to her. And he goes, sorry, they're a little rowdy. Yeah, had a good mission. 
I can understand. You can tell from you can tell from his tone, he's not really that sorry. I'll just say to him, I can understand. We just completed a mission. We just came here to cool off. Get a beer. Then be uh, back to our as, ship. Uh, as uh, as they kind of break off for you from you, you'll notice that uh, the group that you originally uh, kind of marked as being very boisterous and loud and um, there's uh, this man uh, who kind of came up to to kind of settle things with y'all a little bit. Um, but there's also another man uh, in the group who seems to be standing like back and apart from all of them a little bit. Um, uh, not particularly old, um, but like has has almost the the un unblemished kind of look of like a, a greenhorn. You know, like he doesn't he doesn't look as roughed up or as uh, kind of uh, world weary as the rest of the people in the group. And he's kind of like standing apart from the rest of them. But he's he's definitely part of that group, too. Uh, and the, all of their eyes are on you three as you, I assume, slowly start to leave the bar. Yeah. Yep. I'll eventually follow up and catch up with those two, I guess. All right. I'll make sure to get my card before I leave because I gave Tessie the card to pay. For yeah, the yeah, yeah, for sure. Tessie, <laughs> Tessie, make sure to give it back. So what was that about? As I take a sweep from the bottle, I just bought from the random couple. Yeah, uh, just another group asserting dominance that they get priority over any any job. And you, you were you stole his gun. Ah. Uh. Well, that was an impressive trick, Rock. I mean, you gotta know how to disarm people. It certainly you... helps that she uh, had the gun in a position that makes it look like she wants it to be stolen. Yeah. It, it was it's impressive. not too smart. <laughs> makes me not really think that they're probably as good as they let on. Well, at least not those three. Now, the, no, that guy who came up, probably their leader. He the looked guy. a little bit more impressive. Yeah. Yeah, he was all right. You want some of this? Oh, I'll, I'll hand over the bottle. I'll just put my hand up. He's like, I already had my beer. Thanks. Okay, suit, suit yourself. Where'd you I'll get just that? I'll take a nurse <laughs> Well, hmm. well, Rock, probably somewhere in the bar. She didn't get it from uh, Tessie, so I don't know. Who did you pay for that? Just someone at, a, at one of the tables? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, at least uh, this way, if we don't go directly back to the ship and find Astro on the way there, Astro's going to find himself in a very interesting situation at that bar. Oh, well, I mean, I didn't tell Astro the name of the bar, of who I was going to see there. So, well, he'll probably just go there expecting to find us. <laughs> mm. You know, we might want to do something. I mean, the poor boy, he's just, he's just going to cause more trouble. Yes, Astro, that poor boy. Maybe we should, well, when we get back to the ship at some point, yeah. we'll send him a message that we made it back. Okay. I'll All take right. another swig. <laughs> and as we end our scene, uh, fading to black as uh, as our uh, as our Evelyn takes another swig of her appropriated booze. Um, <laughs> sp speaking of Astro, what's he up to right now? All right. Well, Astro is heading over to the music venue um, to see if he can uh, uh, get an in with the band there. All right. Uh, yeah, you make your way down. Um, you do uh, make your way to kind of like a it, it's almost like lodging, like a like a residential rental area. Uh, but it's also like on the edge of a commercial district. You can tell that like there's various venues uh, along this kind of like midway strip that goes between the, the two sections. Um and you can tell that there's like some residential areas that are specifically set up to kind of like connect and lead into those. And that appears they, they appear to have gotten residents at one of those. Uh, as you make yourself known, uh, Toe Licit uh, comes up to uh, talk with you. 
Hey, uh, yeah, you're Astro? That's me. In the uh, flesh. All right, well, you know, he looked at me really weird when I brought up your name. Like, he didn't believe me either, uh, but he said he, I could let you in. Um, great, that's all I ask. Oh, and before I forget, I produce a autographed poster for him. This is for you. He takes it from you. Thanks. Uh, right. Well, yeah, follow me. Uh, he'll start leading you back through, um, like a, like almost like an alleyway that only has doors on one side. Um, you're not sure what's like on the other side of the wall that doesn't have doors, but um, as you continue down this hallway, it eventually cuts around a corner. Um, and as you get to uh, some, some doors that are a little bit further spaced apart, uh, he'll lead up to one and kind of rap on the door. And he goes, R, R, the, uh, the ones here. Uh, you'll hear a glass shatter in the room beyond. Uh <laughs> And he like looks at you, shrugs, and like opens the door for you, and then just walks away. Uh, what's his name? Would I? Uh, I'd probably know it, right? R. Yeah. Uh, his name is Oer. Uh, O E apostrophe R, as in the slang way of saying over. Okay. <laughs> um. Oer. Um. Okay. It says, Oer, how you been? Long time no see. Uh, uh, he, like, you see, uh, like, it's hard to see in here. It's mostly dark. Uh, most of the light in this room is coming from the door that you just opened. Um, you hear some fumbling in the darkness and the light comes on. Uh, you'll notice uh, a man who is not wearing a shirt. Uh, is thin as all hell, but has, like, very well-defined, like, muscles. Um, he has spiked hair, uh, spiked orange hair, um, and he has, like, glowing glasses on. Um, and he looks at you. He's, Astro, oh, it is you. Sure oh, is. The he one holds and out only. his hands. <laughs> How you been, uh, old pal? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, playing shows and uh, Let me see. drinking. Last, last show I saw of yours, I think it was about, boy, I want to say five years ago. Yeah, the um, the Benefit concert. Yeah, that's the one. He snaps his fingers. Man, you guys know how to put on a show. Yeah, Granted, yeah. I don't remember too much of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I have some vague uh, impressions of that night and your show. Oh, man, it was off the wall. Oh, I don't remember it either, so I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what are you doing here? Oh, what are you what are you doing here? here and he kind of like holds his hand over his heart <laughs> uh, well not sure if i know what you mean exactly by that but i've been running with a crew these days i uh little mercenary outfit i put together um uh and it's it's been good it's uh, something i needed to do it's a lot gets me away from the bullshit of the movie business you know He's like nodding slowly. It takes like him like I'll a good three seconds <laughs> after you finish talking. It's like, cool, cool. When's it going to be in theaters? Um, well, hey, it, it's it's not a movie. It's it's life, man. It's real life. It's out there taking risks, putting yourself on the line. It's exhilarating. <sighs> you should try it. So is it like a mini series or one of those reality shows? Um, <laughs> you know what? I'll let you know when it comes out. Right. Awesome. Yeah. You know what? I think I know some people who are real into that shit. Uh, hook me up, you know? Uh, you know, uh, 
when the pre-screening is out, uh, I'll I'll make sure you guys get exclusive access. <laughs> right. Nice. Uh, now, I think I need to not talk to you now. Uh, hey, that sounds good. Uh, but I came here because uh, someone on my ship, big fan of yours and your band. I was wondering if you had some backstage passes I could give to her. She'd love to meet you guys. He like he like wobbles back and you can tell he almost loses his balance a little bit as he like thinks is like is uh is they also like uh blackballed or whatever uh who uh my friend no she's just just a big fan of yours right. name's Torse right yeah I can't I can't let my boss know I gave you anything they'd be real hey. mad. Hey, listen, it's not even for me. I'm just uh, I'm just the go-between guy. You don't even have to mention my name. He, like, rubs his chin a little bit. He's very, like, clean-shaven, very smooth-faced. Um, uh, listen, it'd mean a whole lot to her. She uh, loves you guys. All right, I mean, I guess... Uh, I think I gotta clear it with Jace, uh, before, you know what? Fuck him! Yeah! yeah fuck yeah, him! Yeah! Yeah! And he, like, pushes you harder than you're comfortable <laughs> with? Uh, yeah! Alright, sure, fuck it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, just, you know, watch the hair, but yeah! <laughs> All There's right. that punk rock rock attitude i'm looking for dude how many times i gotta tell you that ain't what it is bro or metal or you, you know I'm, I'm not good with the whole music genre thing he just he just pats you on the shoulder he goes yeah you know what here he like reaches into his uh his pants and like pulls out like a little stub of something that's like all folded and crinkled up he's like i didn't think i was gonna use it but yeah here give this to her hey thanks i owe you one yeah 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 you know what hey he looks at you like thinking you know what? Um, I heard that um, people are looking for uh, info on what you're up to, man. Why don't you tell me? Hey, I, I told you already. No, New mercenary no, outfit. but I mean, like, what are you doing? That's what I'm all about these days. He, like, stares at you. All right, I try. All right, hey, yeah, keep on, man. Yeah, you too. Thanks for these. Pats the tickets. Uh, what? You know, should let you get to it. You got a big show to prepare for. <laughs> he like he like lifts up his light up sunglasses <laughs> that are like all glowing from your side, and you can see they're like shining equally as bright on his face. But as he like lifts them up, you can see these like giant dark rings under each of his eyes. He like wipes his eye a little bit and puts the glasses back down. And he goes, "All right, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some sleep. Uh, I'll see you, man." Hey, take it easy. Uh. A uh, rock on, right? <laughs> sure, man. Whatever. <laughs> All right, and uh, Astro will leave. All right. Yeah. As you walk out the door, you look down at the uh, little bit of receipts you got. Uh, it does look like uh, the ticket uh, you received uh, is basically a friends and family ticket uh, that was all crumpled up in his pocket. He doesn't have anyone's name on it or anything, um, but it definitely does give access. Perfect. Uh, can I can I put in a call to Torse? Yeah, you can totally like uh, send a. Uh, like a terminal like the next time you hit a terminal you can send a message to her account the next time she logs into any terminal she'll have a message from you then okay i'll do that all right well um that kind of 
you know, takes care of the bar and what Astro's up to. What else do you guys want to get up to on station? Hmm. <clears throat> wow. Uh, I mean, once I'll get back to the ship, uh, I'll, I'll assume I'll get the message about the bar. Um, I'll, I'll ask, um, ask them, did you find that bartender you're looking for? Oh, yeah. We, we found the bartender. And some trouble. Had some fun. Trouble? Uh, another wouldn't crew. wouldn't call that trouble. Uh, I wouldn't call it. Well, they were trying to be trouble. Oh, uh, please tell me you got in a bar fight. Tor- Torse is here, <laughs> by the way. Her head is just down on the table in front of her. Uh, like, her head's just resting against the table. And she, like, turns her head sideways to look at you. Uh, you guys got into trouble? No, I no, it wasn't trouble. And that's a weird stance to take as our captain, by the way. Um, no, I just I kicked a, I disarmed I love someone. A bar fight. Sue me. Well, hey, te- technically, te- technically, don't oh, there was say no- that. Astro, stop saying sue me to everyone. We've had those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can't help it. I didn't really, expect so many people to take me up on that. Really think that we should look into that thing I mentioned before? <laughs> what, the uh, under the table stuff? Well, yes, that, but no, I just meant Torse, you know, having full power of attorney over you in all legal matters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have the time for it. She sadly sets her head back down on the table. Listen, Torse has mean? enough on the plate. Oh, you didn't get your tickets, did you? They were sold out two weeks ago. Aww. I should have bought them before we left on the mission. Ah, of course, I almost forgot. I uh, takes out the backstage pass. This is for you. She, like, looks at it. Thinks you're, like, giving her, like, some dumb trinket you bought on station or something until she turns <laughs> to look at it. Such and then just fake. sees this crumpled piece of paper. And it, it, you can see the expression on her face change in waves as she slowly realizes what it is. Like, first it's like, is that a ticket? How did he get a ticket? That's not just any ticket. Like she's getting more and more like yeah. surprise as she examines it. And she just snaps it out of your hand. It's like, where the, wh- how did, what? I talked to Ower. Uh, he, he's in quite a state by the way. And I wonder if he's always like that. Um, but, uh, I managed to convince him to, uh, give me a backstage pass for a true fan. Oh, Astro, you're the best. Oh, this is going to be so good. Just, but you could do me a favor. Don't tell anybody you know me or you got these from me. Apparently, I'm sort of bad news, and I want your band to get in trouble. Just, I'm going to lean over uh, to Dine and go, okay. does Astro think that we just invoke his name everywhere? How <laughs> 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 How bad is he blacklisted? And I'll lean in to join the huddle. Uh, I I look I look at Evelyn and I'm like, there's only one kind of blacklist, and it's pretty bad. Look, I I, I don't I don't claim to understand how any of this works. Like, does me is this like cursed or something now or what? Maybe if Tose would stop jumping up and down and screaming, she'd be able to tell us. <laughs> as she's oh, yeah. like, as she's taken the ticket, run to the terminal on the side of the room. You can see her like messing with some sort of like a reservation system to like log her name in and stuff like that as like like some sort of RSVP type, like check in for your appointment style system. And she's like, she's not paying attention to you at all, but she's turned the ticket over and you can tell she's like typing out whatever code is on the back of the ticket into the terminal. Uh, uh, Astro well, just looks excited. on fondly. That's, that's what we do. We do it for the kids. Bless <laughs> she, their hearts. She's almost my age, Astro. She's she's still a kid. She's twenty four years old. That's not a kid, Astro. May maybe to you it isn't. To me in my mid forties. You're forty? I know I don't look it. He certainly, he certainly just, doesn't act it. 
You're a lot younger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't hear that. No, but but realistically, one, is Torsten going to be okay there by herself? Um, why don't one of you go with her? I'd go, but again, um, yeah, I I'm know. sort of not wanted. I, I don't think it's, what was it, the, the scene? Yeah, that, that's what they call it. Yeah, that's not my scene. Uh, I don't know if that's how that ticket works, but... Uh, anyway, she can handle ticket? herself. She's she's a capable person. Uh, she's not like she's going into a bad part of town. Where's well, the, we... where's the concert? Uh, <laughs> seemed fine. You don't know, do you? Well, I went to the venue, so it was I just can't remember how I got there. Is all. <laughs> Is it the bad part of town, Astro? Astro is one of those people who follows the GPS religiously yeah. Yeah. and doesn't look around as he's following it. Matt or he just got a big whiff of some sort of smoke coming out of that dude's um, green room. <laughs> doesn't remember stuff now. Astro, if I, if I pull up a map, can you tell me where you went? Evelyn, um, would you know what the bad part of town of Eos is? I I think she would. I think she I think she's been here enough times to sort of have a gauge for that sort of thing. Okay. It wasn't a I bad sure. part of town. It was fine. It was a cool hip place. Oh, uh, Astro. Uh, uh, as you guys are talking, uh, Torse seems finished up with whatever she was doing and comes back over to the uh, kind of like meeting table. Oh well, I have plans now. Tell me. Just keep the good news running. Who got us a job? We did oh, not around. get us a job. <laughs> but we're waiting to hear back from a contact. Listen, if you guys would just let me go off on my own for a couple hours, I'll come back with something. I mean, I'm down. I won't yeah. stop you. Yeah, go for it. But Better luck than right. we've had. No, this is this is the kind of like just, I come back with something and we're doing it. This isn't like a we talk about it after kind of situation though. I mean, can you give me an example of what it might entail? I cannot. Like what if you come back and we have to go, I don't know, shoot up some planet. Uh a war torn area. Depends on the planet. Uh, no orphanages, unless the kids are assholes. <laughs> so I kind of no smirch myself. No orphanages. <laughs> Period. Okay, no orphanages. Um, yeah, I, I mean, look, I... Somehow thinks you're serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rock, if I may, I recommend we wait at least 24 hours for Tessie. If we don't hear anything with from one of her contacts by then, then we'll let you do what you need to do. All right, I should... Should we have mentioned Astro in his giant black list that keeps no. on hoarding above us? To I will, I will literally cut it and just say no. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a bad. I, I think that's a bad idea. I okay. personally, I think his black list only affects those in the entertainment industry. We are not the entertainment industry. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm hoping. When it comes down to mercenary jobs, they don't care if I'm blacklisted by some media corporation. Well, not especially if they expect you to come back dead. Then they'll probably just give you the mission anyways. Well, that too. <laughs> Yikes, don't take Diane. any suicide jobs, please. I prefer not. I like living. I've done it all my life. <laughs> really now. <laughs> I'll just kind of look. At, I'll just kind of look at him. All right, I'm. I'm gonna go to help get some of the supplies moved in, and then take a nap. I'm gonna go help All right, Rock move the good. supplies. Uh, Graham, I'll I'll point out uh, the ones that we're gonna need inside to restock. I think we're low on some of the repair parts after that last mission, so let's get those on board first. Oh yeah, didn't Dine get kind of shot up as I'll start walking towards the mech hangar? <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, everything looks all dandy. Evelyn did a bang-up job on the repairs. Oh, I'll kind of catch up and say, well, yeah, but I, I like we're out of, almost out of parts, so like if you can get anything to replace what I use, I'd really appreciate that. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll look through what we've got as the three of you kind of like head down into the hangar proper to kind of like see see what parts you can uh, kind of replace most easily on as, the ship. As we walk down, I'd be like, of all the things I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting the uh, the, two, the pirates to have two long range sniper mechs. I mean, seriously. Yeah, there's something strange about that. Still, they were better equipped than I expected. Still wondering what Fred uh, found out before the uh, Teratella shut him up. All right, Firstly, well. can we look into what happened to Fred by any chance? Yeah, so what I'm going to say is um, it is going to be probably a couple of days on station um, for you guys before anything materially changes in terms of your situation. Um, so I'm going to do uh, a little bit of downtime for all of you for your R&R on AOS. Right. Um, <clears throat> and that'll take us into the break. Um, we'll take a break after we finish this up. I want to get an idea from each of you of what kind of thing uh, you want to be doing over the next couple of days on AO Station. All right. Well, uh, for me, uh, at least to start, uh, Astro will want to investigate um, like maybe what happened to Franklin. Uh that person from Teratel, I forget her name now, but she had said something kind of uh, cryptic about uh, yes. Fred. Uh, Rhea Rays. Uh, I yeah. will add her to your list of known list of known NPCs now that you guys have met her. Um, and uh, while I am on it, I will also add Tessie Mendels uh, to the list of uh contacts you all have um uh so yes what that sounds like to me uh todd is the downtime action uh called gather information yes all right so yeah let's go ahead and say you spend the next couple of days kind of looking into like obviously not all your time but you make a concerted effort at some point over these next few days to try and figure out what's going on um with your reputation at Terratella and your friend your friend frank fr your fr <laughs> your i hate you <laughs> i never your friend, i hate bad npc <laughs> Yeah, I make bad NPC names. You're not allowed to make bad NPC names. Uh, your friend, Fred Frank Lyon. Did I make that name? Yes, you yes. did. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you have to say that three times fast at some point. Fred Frank Lyon. Fred Frank Lyon. No, no, Fred, Fred Frank Lyon. Fred Frank Frank Your, your friend, Fred, Fred Frank Lyon. Oh, boy. No. Yeah, fuck you, right? <laughs> All right, cool. So when you gather information, you poke your nose around, perhaps where it doesn't belong, and investigate something, conducting research, following up on a mystery, tracking a target, or keeping an eye on something. You might head to a library or go undercover to learn what you can. Whatever it involves, you're trying to gather information on a subject of your choice, and you can gain information, you can use information gained as reserves. So your subject is the disappearance of Fred Frank Lyon. Um, and you need to roll. Um, this will be a straight up pilot skill check. Okay. Cut. Unless, unless you want to invoke things to modify um. it. Uh, I am going to invoke something. I'm making this risky. Um, so, uh, you're already blacklisted by Terratella and they're conscious now of you looking into their... Uh, interests um, so it's going to be difficult to not get pushback on this uh, when a roll is risky um, it uh, modifies the roll such that um, uh, it has clear and obvious complications even on a success if you're uh, so basically if uh, you roll between it between a 10 and a 20 you succeed, but you still get a consequence. You have to get above a 20 if you want no consequences. Oh, yikes. So uh, it might be a good idea to invoke some some sort of 
uh, bonus or modifier or explain to me why you should get accuracy on this if you're trying to modify it. And we'll we'll talk about it. Um, well, yeah, <laughs> this is just funny because the the reason Fred uh, is in hot water in the first place is because I did one of these downtime activities and got him in trouble. If I mess this up again, they're probably just going to like execute him or something. Um, oh, no. Fred is so then Bob will never have to say his name again. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that why this is risky? <laughs> no, that's um, why it became super risky. <laughs> her own so I I do have an investigate skill trigger, um, which might be might be applied here. Um, and and is there a way I can just maybe is there a way I can just look into uh, what might have happened to Fred through uh, like public domain information at least to start out? Um, so I'm not like triggering anything that would get him in more trouble. And if the answer is no, that that's fine. I'm just I'm I'm going to curious. say with the kind of character that he is and how he's involved with Terratella is kind of like a mid rank bureaucrat. Um, there's not really going to be a whole lot of public info on him. Um, it's kind of like you either you either do the damn thing or you don't. Yeah, there, I don't I don't think there's a I don't think there's a middle ground here. Yeah. Uh, what if I. Um knowing that um could could the act of investigating this be tracked back to me possibly it depends on how things uh unfold uh could, you you tell me how you're setting things up and the circumstances of them and i'll i'll tell you how uh how it plays out could i delegate this to torse uh you could um da, 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 da. I think Castro invokes the power of uh, as the captain. Hey Torse, okay. look into this guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, if that's the case, I'll <laughs> I'll let you do that. It's gather information, it'll still use your statistics, obviously though. Okay, but if if that's the uh, positioning you want to set up before you go into this, yeah, Torse will look into it for you. Um, yeah, I'll just say to Torse, um, wondering if you can use your resources to look into what might have happened to Fred, uh, Fred Frank Lyon. Uh, I seem to just mess things up uh, when I dig in too deep, so thought maybe another pair of eyes would be better. All right. Um, okay. Uh, for bringing Torse in, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and give you accuracy on the roll. Uh, what accuracy does is you get to roll a 1d6 and add that on top of your 1d20 roll. Okay. So it'll still be a risky roll, but you're going to get accuracy on it. Okay. Um, cool. And I guess since she's technically doing the investigation, my skill trigger probably doesn't apply here. What were you going to use? Just And I'll tell you if it applies. Uh, so you have a skill trigger called investigate. Yeah. I'm going to make you choose either you do it yourself and get the skill trigger or you have Torse do it and I'll give you the accuracy. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the latter. I'll, okay. I'll have Torse do it. Um, so that's going to be a D 20 and then a D six on top of that. That's correct. All right. Let me, let me roll that. Uh, Okay, so oh boy, <laughs> on the D twenty I rolled a four, and on the D six I rolled a two, so that's a six. All right, not so uh, good. So what what gather information says is on a nine or less, choose one. You get what you're looking for, but it gets you into trouble straight away, or get out now and avoid trouble. Let's let's get out now and avoid trouble. I think we've had our share of trouble for now. OK, uh, what I'll say is until something. So if you choose, I want to I want to make sure you are aware of the risks and and kind of what you're giving up it's just so you have can make an informed decision. If you select the get out now and avoid trouble, you cannot redo this 
or look into this again until something materially changes in your position to make it different somehow. Like, Fred's like if body. you just decide the next downtime to do this exact same thing again, sure. you won't be able to. OK, so if you give up now, you're giving up on following this lead until you have more information to go on a different way in or something along those lines. Yeah. So if I get out now. So so basically, Astro's thinking something weird is happening at Tarotella. They're they're keeping something under wraps, maybe. So he suspects some sort of conspiracy or something. So if he wants to investigate this in the future, he's going to have to find another lead into that. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's correct. You'll you'll need a new way in. That's fair enough. Let let's let's uh, cut our losses. All right, sounds good. Uh, all right. Over these next couple of days, who has another idea for their downtime? I have something, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Evelyn? Um, I was looking into maybe doing Get Connected. Um, so we, we know another um, Lance team, um, the, the Cane Vagrants. I was thinking about reaching out to them and maybe seeing if they knew of any potential jobs that they'd be willing to part with. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. That's definitely a uh, a lead you can follow up on um, <clears throat> just for uh, the the purposes of keeping the audience informed. Yep. Uh, the Cane Vagrants are a private firm known for taking long haul escort and protection jobs. Uh, they have worked with the DBC crew on a diff- on a prior job. Uh, and that's how t- uh, that's how Evelyn knows them. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and uh, we'll we'll talk about the getting getting connected here. Um, so on get to on get connected, when you get connected, you make connections, call in favors, ask for help or drum up support of a course of action. You can use your contacts, resources or aid as reserves for the next mission. Name your contact and role. All right. So tell me what you're looking for and who you're contacting. So the cane vagrants. I think and how do you how do you want to position this? So my notes are a little incomplete at this point, but I think D- Dally Knight was the um, lead for them. Uh, that is the uh, leader of Shep Seven, which oh. was the uh, which was the Kane Vagrant crew that you were on the mission with. Okay. Uh, the Kane Vagrants is a much larger organization than the crew you were working with. I see. I see. Well, I mean, it seems she seems like the person to contact. Um, I would just say something defective, like, "Hey, it's uh, like, hey, Dally, it's Evelyn. Um, we were out looking for some new work, and we figured to see if you guys need some help with anything, or if you knew any jobs that you guys didn't mind parting with, like something to that effect." Yeah, absolutely. And uh, are you activating anything for this? Yeah, I was thinking of triggering. Um, I have um, word on the street. Would okay. That, yeah, read us, here? read us that, and tell us what it says. Uh, get gossip news or hearsay from the streets, uh, <laughs> or from a particular a particular social scene. Yeah, you know what? I'm totally going to count that and give you the plus two. Uh, What I'm also going to give you if you want to expend it is uh, one of the things you guys got uh, from working with the cane vagrants was increased reputation with them. Uh, If you spend that reputation, I will give you accuracy on this roll. But that means we won't have it again for later. That'll use it up for now, like calling in a favor. Uh... Yeah, I feel say so. feel free to discuss with the other players yeah. if you want. You can make this as a player decision, not just a character. That's fair. Um, are you guys cool with me spending this? Or do I don't, think, it, it? I don't think it's needed personally. Okay. Like I don't think it's. I, don't, I think it's fine if you want to. I'm not going to say no, but I I don't think it's needed. I'm a, I'm on the fence because like we're, you also have a lead potentially, and if you find something better than I find, it's kind of wasted accuracy, you know. Uh, yeah, let me hold off on it. I'm just going to use word on the street, and no, um, I'm not going to use reputation. All right, yeah, go ahead and make me a pilot skill check plus your trigger. So, 1d20 plus 2. Please be good. Hey, that's that's pretty good. 15. Hey, yeah, on a 15. Uh, on 10 through 19, your contact will help you, but you've got to do a favor or make good on a promise afterwards. If you don't follow through, treat this result on a, as a nine or less the next time you get 
uh, you uh, get it for the same organization. So basically, if you continue to get connected with the same group um, and don't like do stuff for them in return, uh, you will slowly lose reputation with them. Um, what I'll say here uh, for getting that is... Uh, <clears throat> Um, I'm going to say, uh, they absolutely can get you information on jobs in the area, uh, but it will take time. Um, they're not going to be able to give you anything instantly. Um, but if you're going to be spending maybe a week or at least, you know, a few more days on AO station, they can check with who needs work in the area and get you something maybe in three or four days. That's perfect. Thank you. As I yeah. Uh, and I'll inform the rest of the crew that I was able to hook up this connection, so potential jobs down the line. All right. Yeah, no, yeah, you definitely got potential jobs down the line. Um, uh, and also, um, I'm going to give you... Uh, bu- 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 access. So access uh, is a type of reserve, a key card, invite, bribes, or insider access to a particular location. So the reserve you're getting is access to a escort mission. Uh, you guys can use that to get an escort mission um, in the near future. Cool. Nice. All right. Uh, who else has uh, ideas for their downtime? Uh, I think I do. All right. Yeah, go ahead. So Dine, having worked with corporation major corporations previously, doesn't entirely trust that um, what they gave us is exactly what was on their list. So he's going to do an in-depth inventory, more than like more than just the gloss over that we probably did at the beginning. So he's going to spend his time going through everything and personally inventorying it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You can do that. Um, So what do you want this to be? Like, what are you aiming for? Oh, let's see. He wants to make a note of uh, compare stuff that we, we thought we would get to stuff that we didn't get and then inventory everything. Um, and then make a list of stuff that we probably still need to get before we get on any further missions. Sounds like get organized to me. Pretty much. So yeah, get organized would definitely be it. Well, actually, get organized is organizations, not get organized as in. Yeah, let me uh, let me read this real quick. It says things along the lines of, uh, yes, you start a venture essentially. Um, and it gains efficiency as you work on it, uh, and it determines how effectively uh, you conduct activities, um, size, reach, wealth, and reputation. Um, da, 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 directly assist with an activity. Okay, influence can be used for acquiring assets, creating opportunities or swaying public opinion. Okay, yeah, this is this is more involved with like influence in an area and what you're doing is working with like material components. I would probably say right? mine is more more along the lines of get creative. It's not it's not Yeah. Okay. I I could see that too because um this is something that you've done on like a test out uh downtime action, isn't it? It's something Where similar. Where you basically what did you use last time? Uh, it was pre-battle preparations. Yes, but it what was didn't use get creative, I used get creative for, it. for it. Okay, so when you get creative, you tweak something or try to make something new, either a physical item, a piece of software, or a piece of software. Once finished, you can cre- uh, use your new creation as reserve. So what we had said this was before was you like to be basically a prepper, mm-hmm. right? Like you you like everything prepped. That's that's still kind of what you're doing now. Yeah. Um, last time you did fail the role, but when you fail a role on get creative, you don't make any progress. But the next time uh, you get a nine or less, you get to treat it as a 10 or 19. Yeah. I would count that moving forward for you because this is still an extension of Dine trying to always be prepared for everything. Yeah. Um, so if you want to go ahead and roll a get creative, uh, we'll count your your kind of previous get created get creative role as well. So here's a question for you. Can I apply investigate to this role? Because I am looking in depth 
into all of the supplies that we've got and comparing it to what we would have we thought we would have gotten and then making a list. Okay. Uh, tell me what the investigate says it triggers for. Research a subject or look at something in great detail. If you can't find information directly, you learn how you can get access to that information. Learn about a subject of historical relevance or become well-read on a subject, investigate a mystery or solve a puzzle, locate a person or object through research or investigation. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead and let you use that for this. So go, go ahead and give me your pilot skill check plus your trigger. Uh... 18. All right, 18. On a 10 or not 10 through 19, you find what you're looking for, but choose one. Either you leave clear evidence of your rummaging, or you have to dispatch someone or implicate someone innocent to uh, Oh, I'm reading gather information. That that didn't make sense. I was like, why are you going to kill someone in your hangar? I was just going to say this sounds very familiar. Yeah. Uh, you make progress on your project, but don't quite finish it. You can finish it during your next downtime without a roll. But choose the two things you're going to need. Okay, so basically you're making progress. You're you're kind of doing what you always do as Dine, which is make sure the DBC has what it needs to keep working. So what I'm going to say is what you were able to accomplish looking at the materials you have here is you have noticed a specific deficit you have. So when you choose the two things you need... I want you to choose the two things you think there's a deficit of here. Okay. Either you need quality materials, specific knowledge or techniques, specialized tools, or a good workplace. Uh, so I would choose quality materials and what was the what was the third one again? Specialized tools. Specialized tools, yeah. Okay, so what I'll say is, <clears throat> yes, they gave you very, like, factory-grade, not-for-consumer-use items. Um, it technically satisfies all the requirements, and you do have, like, what you need, um, but it would be much more efficient if you had a few more, like, high-grade materials and tools that would work with these objects more effectively. If you're able to acquire those by the time you have a next your next downtime, you'll automatically succeed on doing the same project. OK. OK, so quality material. OK, I'll make a note of that for the next one. Uh, yeah. So the next time you get creative, uh, well, before on your next downtime, you can instantly succeed on your get creative as long as you get quality materials and specialized tools. All right. To that now. Uh, and then Rock, what do you want to do for your downtime? Uh, I guess I would be trying to find out what kind of jobs I could get that would be a little bit more sketchy. Okay. But pay more. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what do you see this as? I have a, I have a few recommendations, but uh, probably get a damn drink. you want them. Uh, oh, blow no. off some steam, corrals, generally get into trouble. I could also see it as buying some time, i.e. like buying buying time for your crew to keep operating. We can do another get connected like Evelyn did, uh, basically contacting groups of people you might know to call in favors. Um, power to cost would be eh, a little bit. Power to cost might be okay because you're specifically looking for like dangerous stuff. Um, and the power would basically be like <laughs> the power as in keeping the lights on. Um, scrounge and barter is not quite. Uh, I, you could do get a damn drink. Um, it just has, you know, consequences, but I guess that makes sense, you know, if you're, you know, dealing, dealing with low down people too. Um, so yeah, what, what calls do you the most? Uh, I don't know, probably gather information. Uh, da, da, da. All right, so you're trying to... Okay, so what I'll say for gather information is it will get you information on jobs you could do. Right. Right? Uh, so that's actually, like, probably even better. You're not you're not entangling yourself immediately. You're kind of, like... Uh, Which is the point. I'm scanning. trying to find the contacts kind of yes, thing. Yes, uh, that would be... 
Um, now, if you're trying to make a long term contact, I would say roll a get connected. But if you're more focused on just the jobs themselves, I would say it's gather information, like you said. Uh, let's go get connected then, if that's what you, okay. if that's what you feel. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So if you want to make a a con a contact contact, yeah, let's probably do a get connected. All right. Uh, how's word on the street sound for a uh, trigger? Yeah, I'll I'll totally use that. It's definitely lines up with the type of people you're calling on. Um, now I will ask you this: you need to name a contact before you roll. So who are you getting in contact with for this? Oh, what would be the hardest thing to say? Repeatedly. Okay, I <laughs> guess Marcus. I'll just uh, make this heroic with difficulty. <laughs> You'll need a 20 plus to avoid, uh, you know, consequences. I'm and... in it to win it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I think you have names on the spots hard. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. <laughs> You toe licit and or uh you know they're they're just hovering out there they're like thanks for the name bud <laughs> frank frank lion <laughs> uh uh jim gallard jim gallard okay so you're going to try and get in contact with Jim, who you think has a lead on some stuff here. Um, so you make connections, call in favors, ask for ask for help or drum up support. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and have you roll. Um, whew, man, so you don't know this person well yet that you're trying to get connected with. Uh, so this is going to be difficult. Um, so it'll be a d20 plus two and then minus a d6. Oh boy! Oh, okay. Uh, I rolled okay. an eight plus two minus four. All right. Uh, so yeah, you would have been right on the edge uh, before the difficulty, but the difficulty got you. Um, so on a nine or less, your contact will help you, but you have to do a favor or make good on a promise right now. If you don't, they won't help you. Uh, and the thing they ask you for is if you want to prove to the to, uh, let me pull up my list. Jim Gallard. Uh, if you want to prove to Jim Gallard that you're the type of person who can get the missions done that he wants you to get done. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Jeremy meeting Astro is not sufficient to, uh, get connected. Um, <laughs> I would say he tells you there's another side mission they want you to do first uh, that involves getting their hands on someone who's been kind of kind of dodging some uh, some headhunters for a little while on station. Uh, so I just have to like find this person on station, bring them in. You'd have to find them and bring them in before they'd be willing to uh, give you any help. Uh, do they say anything about what they did? Uh, they said, um, I'm going to have to get used to this. So let me pull it up. Jim said, uh, Jim said that they, uh, have a lot of gambling debt. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I could do that. All right. Uh, he says that, yeah, if you get this guy and bring him in uh, in the next two weeks, they'll have something for you. OK, uh, he'll send you the info tomorrow. OK, sounds good. Uh, and then one other thing that I don't think counts as a downtime activity, but am I able to make sure that uh, Torste doesn't get jumped at this concert or something? <laughs> so uh you can totally uh talk to her about it unfortunately the ticket only admits one um so she says I, I mean i don't know i could try to get you in um it is like a backstage pass that's usually yeah, for like, like friends and relatives we could like try and talk our way past the bouncer yeah i mean you're like an important friend of the band you need a bodyguard right if you think we can pull it off i'm willing to try Yeah. All right. Well, then 
that that covers our downtime actions and i think we've kind of set up where we're going to pick up for when we come back to the from the break so uh Thanks, everyone, for joining us for part one of session one. Uh, we're going to take a little break here and then come back for uh, for another recording after this. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, you know, let us know. Um, check out more of our stuff and take care. See you. Bye. Later. Bye. <laughs> where, where, where did that come from? <laughs>